Hi, my name's Cathy Millett and this week we're starting three videos on how to make brick walls out of craft foam. So what is craft foam? It's that stuff you can get in the hobby shop for your kids to cut out, make shapes from and it looks, it's quite bendy, it's two mil thick. It's in a variety of colours, really easy and cheap to get hold of. So it's a great building material for facing, easy to cut and score too. Now I'm going to use a brother scan and cut machine. You could do this by hand. Any cutting machine will work. There's Cricut, Silhouette, all sorts of ones out there. And I just have a brother scan and cut because my mum gave it me and she's got a new one. I'm not going to argue, it was free. We're in Inkscape, which is a free CAD drawing program, it does 2D drawing, and it's useful for drawing things up like this and importing them to other graphics programs because it will export in SVG, which is um, a very standard file. And I'm going to be putting this on my brother's scan and cut machine, and you can import SVG into that. You can't import many different file types. So this works very well. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into here and just save as um, a new file. And I'm going to call it um, Lapworth English Brick, I think, because this is an English brick bond. I'm going to zoom in a bit, and then I'm going to think about how I do my bricks. The Brother Scan and Cut cannot do too many bricks. It's got a little bit of a object maximum. And each brick counts as an object because of the way you draw them as rectangles. So what that means is after you've done too many, it gets a bit of a wobbly on. So what we're going to do first is draw the first brick. And to do that, I need to work out my size. Now I have a photo of, and down here, scribbled on this, this is my um, lap with locks when I went there, scribbled on here is it's 7.2 by 22.8. So if I go to my calculator um, and do 7.24 divided by 43.5, because that's the divided to get it into British O scale, I get, um, or I need to times by 10, because that's in mil. So I, I need these bricks to be 1.66 mil high. Not very big really, is it? And then it was 22.8 um, divided by 43.5 times 10, and it's 5.24. So we're going to do 1.66 by 5.24, and we're just going to draw a box using this box command. And you can draw any box size that you like, and we want the width to be um, 5.24, and we want the top to be 1.66. And you can see now how small it is, so we'll just zoom in a bit more. Now at the moment, this has got some settings for it on, and, and notice I keep flicking between the arrow and the zoom key. If you click on this and then right click, you can go to fill and stroke. And that shows you that there's no paint on this, that my stroke paint is currently black and 100% opacity, and it has a millimeters of 0.155, um, which seems perfectly reasonable for me. Okay, so we've got our brick and it's saying 0.155. But if you go and click on this brick, at this point, it changed its dimensions. Um, I, I, this just, I don't know why it does this, but you just need to go in again and do the right dimensions again. And I think it's because it's the outside of the brick and it's trying to give you the inside of the brick. But mine's actually the cut line, including the mortar. So that black line is effectively my mortar. So I need it to be on the outside dimension, not on the inside dimension for this to work. Um, now we want to copy and paste. I find the shortcuts for copy and paste don't work very well, but Control D just duplicates it and you can drag it across. Um, you can move it around and when it lines up, it will say corner to corner. So you just have to keep hitting Control D and about six across is all that Brother Scan and Cut will cope with. So this isn't going to take you that long. Um, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you need to halve them. So Control D again and just drag down. I find um, I can line this up. If I just do half, if I say oh, 2.62 here, um, it changes the stroke style. So you have to go and do 1.55 again over here. And it changes this again. It becomes very iterative, this trying to get it to work. And actually half isn't exactly half. So I Control D this again and drag and paste it. You can see it's a little bit short. 
um, it doesn't quite line up corner to corner to the full brick and that's because of the lines and where it's measuring. So if I just select both of these, they're corner to corner. I want it to be 5.24, don't I? Tab. Okay, and then I can just move these across a little bit. Corner to corner. There we go. So I'm lined up. So now I've got these, I actually need them to be lined up on the center. So I'm just going to move it by eye until it's in my center. And I find that easier to do with one rather than two because you've got that lovely little um, center um, little, um, oh, little double arrow thing and you can move it. And I find moving it up here with these can be a little bit better because you can get it lined up just as you want it. Once the first one's on and you have to get these first ones right, there we go. Or everything else drifts out, everything else just goes on perfectly because they just go corner to corner. And I'm going to copy and paste these as a group together just for speed. So control D and drag and corner to corner and it will start lining up. Now we want these to intersect with each other when we cut them. So I'm going to make sure that this row protrudes beyond the row above it by that half brick. Um, which is just enough, there we go, to create what I need. So I've got a cutting line for a course of bricks. And this is English bond, so it alternates long, short, long, short. And now it's very simple. I can just select this whole lot and do Control D. And I've got another set which I can drag down. Now at this point, I find it drags quite a lot in the wrong direction. So that's corner to corner. So I find it easier sometimes to use this to move it down and to small adjust it. Oops. Um, and this time you can do control D with all of these. What I can do now is I've, I've saved these, but what happened is they've saved as an Inkscape SVG and I find brother scan and cuts not a fan of that particularly. So I go and choose plain SVG and I just call this plain. Um, sometimes it's hard to rework the file. It gets rid of things when it does plain. It puts it all as one object. So I keep both versions and just relabel them. So that's plain. Now what we need to do, go into our brother scan and cut software. So brother scan and cut has a canvas workspace. And this is the canvas workspace. And they have a little picture of the um, map that you're going to put into the machine. And you can either do import from your computer on the file system up here, file import from your computer, or you can just hit the SVG button. And that's what we have, isn't it? So we wanted um, English brick plane open. And there we go. I have this. And I don't need anything more at this point. So I will just do file transfer FCM via the internet and hope it's not too big. There we go. Done. So I'm going to send that little bit to go. Now I'm going to share with you a huge tip that I wish I'd realised the first few times I printed this. When you first print these out and bring them into Builder Scan and Cut, the first one comes in fine. The next one you then have to line up. And this caused me no end of problems because I was trying to move it and it didn't work. If you put a single line in the top left of your Inkscape file, and you can see on each of these files, I've got bricks going further right, but that line remains in the same place in the left. If you click on it, you can see that it has the same X and Y coordinates on it. And those X and Y coordinates are the leftmost, uppermost point that it's at. Now that's great for us because what it means is the brother scan and cut when it comes into Canvas Workspace always puts that at the top left. It means everything to the right of it is perfectly lined up and you can print section after section after section of wall. They will line up perfectly as long as the line that's at the top of your file starts in exactly the same place. This will save you so much time fiddling in brother Canvas Workspace. So remember to put that line at the top left and Everything will be perfect.
So we're just about to transfer the program, the, the design, to the Brother Scan and Cut machine. So we just need to load up the map. And to do that, I've got my craft foam. I think this is a couple of mil thick. I got it from Hobbycraft. It's literally called Kids Craft Foam. And there's piles of it and loads of colours. Tend to have black, it looks more like modelling. But you can do it in pink if you want. And you're going to paint it anyway. And you just line it up on here. I find sometimes the corners, this corner is probably not very square because I've um, I've cut it off and I've used this sheet before. So you only need to make sure the top bit's really well stuck, but make sure it's stuck down onto this mat. And the mat's tacky with the glue, so it just sticks. There we go, ready to load it up into the machine and print our design. Right, first of all, just need to turn the machine on. And remember, we've sent the first brick pattern to this machine. So I just need to load my mat. It does keep it in the same place whenever you're printing, but if you're trying to pull it out and reload it, it doesn't quite line up with something as exact as this. Press pattern, and then I'm going to transfer that from the Ethernet, internet, the ether. Press OK, and then I'm just going to cut it. So it'll process for a second or two while it works out, and then I can start the cut. You have to choose a depth. A green cartridge going up and down holds a knife, and it has a depth on it. I chose two for this. One would put, works as well, I've done tests. So I have a one, somewhere between one and two. So the first section is finished cutting, but remember there's a couple of sections. So I just go back, actually I go to home. I delete all the patterns and I bring down a new pattern which I went and put on the ether while that one was printing. It's coming down on the internet. It's a little block further over, so that's fine. Don't do anything with your sheet, just do okay. Cut and set it to go, and it will carry on where it left off. And when it's done, hit OK and unload your sheet. And we're done! Now you can just peel it off. This comes off quite well actually because it's been used a few times. You can see it's losing its sticky there. So here it is, um, really nice cut, really pleased with it. Cuts ever so easily this, it's like going through butter. And now we need to put a hot gun on this to get it to um, just, when you put the heat on the foam expands slightly, so it does warp if you're not careful, you can press it flat, it's fine. And it will pop out these um, lines really nicely. So this is a 1600 watt heat gun. It's quite hot, um, but don't worry, I put it on two, and it's just a quick waft across here. And you can just see those bricks appear. There we go. All it needs. And here it is in close up. Doesn't that look good? Right, it's a little bit bent, but it will straighten back out, especially when glued in place. So you can just straighten it. When it's hot, it will easily distort. But there we go. Now, I did this on a cut of two, there's a different depth cut, or one, it's just one on the cutting dial. And this is the two setting on the cutting dial. And that's what I've just cut this last one on. And here we are, here's a brick wall that I cut for an O-scale diorama. You can see that you can get different size bricks, you can change it, you can turn them round, you can get some really exciting effects and bespoke walls. So here's a little pro tip. If you turn it over and mark where you want your line to be, it's three and a half bricks up. Okay, and I'm just doing a light pass. I'm not going all the way through, but it gives it a little score line. And when you fold it, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Um, but if you want, what you can do is you can go through and with a very sharp knife, this one isn't sharp enough. This is where um, your sharpener really comes into its own with um, foam, because foam blunts knives. Okay, so you can just go in, you must make sure you don't go all the way through, and you can just cut out a little piece. Whoops. So I've got that, and now when I bend it, I can get a nice sharp bend on it. There we go, and so that stonework 
those are going to be the flags on the top of my one and this is a corner end so there we go a nice sharp bend which when glued i've got solid bits of card for here and here besides it will create a really nice bend really pleased so really really good technique i'm going to use it in oscale on my lapworth locks um, snow and ice diorama and i'm going to use it on the dock wall for my port de Nord layout so i've got a number of uses for it i'm also thinking you know you can put w windows and doors in and all sorts of things like that and then once you've heat sealed it and you've done it it takes paint really well so i think that it's going to be very very easy to use this to build a number of things but this isn't a structural um product it's a facing product so you'd have to build a basic styrene or card building and then you would put down this in it or on it as a facing lining so it's a little bit thicker it's a good couple of mil thick this one you could probably get a thinner one and try it with that if you wanted um, but it is good because it bends and my dock wall has loads of bends in it so it's going to be really good for getting those seamless um, bends which I find styrene will do some sheet styrene but it's not as easy so there we go heat gun craft foam and a cutter it's all you need as always, thank you to my patrons who give me the money to be able to make videos like this. Um, their support is really important to me. And if you're enjoying the videos, subscribe to me or check out my website where I put more photos on and you can go and see things. And I, I also put some Instagram and Facebook and all the normal social media. Brilliant. Take care and do let me know what you think.